So today we're going to talk about having God's power in our lives. We're on part three, I believe, of the wonders of God's love. And I mean, isn't it great how much he loves us and cares for us? Watches over us, blesses us, and uh, I mean, I think it's just absolutely fabulous. But we need his power all the time, don't we? Constantly, we need his power. So we're going to look at that today. <clears throat> Pardon me. Having God's power in our lives daily. And so that's kind of what we're going to study together today. So I know you may or may not have your outlines. If you do pull them out, all the scriptures are in there. But before we do, let's pray. And I don't know about you, but uh, during the worship, I, I have hair and it all stood up. I mean, it's just, <clears throat> I mean, it was, I'm playing that guitar and I'm going, whoa, man, this is really, what a blessing. What a blessing. God is so good to us. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you for the wonderful, incredible time of worship and praise. I thank you for your word, Father. You give us your word so we can know you, understand you, and love you more and more and more. So I just thank you for this time together. I thank you that you pour out your love through the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and through the person of the Holy Spirit indwelled within us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love and your goodness and kindness. We ask your blessing on your word today. Blessed, I pray, may it be fruitful, multiply, and grow. And I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're going to talk about um, the fact that we don't want to live a powerless life. Amen? Um, I want God's power all the time. And as I think about that, we can live every single day of our life as overcomers. Every day. Every single day. And also we can live in victory and not defeat. So we live in power, overcoming, and victory, and never, ever, ever defeat. Because we can have God's power operating continuously in our life. Never ending. 24-7. Going to bed at night. Wake up in the middle of the night. Lord, thank you for all your power. I don't know why you woke me up, but I want to thank you anyway. I'm going to go back to sleep now. But we want to thank him constantly for his power operating in each one of our lives. So our scripture today is Psalm 68, 35. God is awesome in his sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and what? Strength to his people. We are his people. We are his chosen people. Isn't that great to know? We're in his kingdom, the kingdom of light. So praise be to God. Praise be to God. So I want to talk about again, and we're going to study today, God's unlimited, his divine, and his supernatural power operating 24-7 in our lives. And we all need it. We constantly need it. So today we're going to study about two or three different little things. So when can I count on God's power? So Roman numeral number one, when I'm tired. <laughs> Do any of you ever get tired? No, you just kind of go 24, no problem whatsoever. But I love this scripture, Isaiah 40, verse 28. Have you never heard or understood? Don't you know that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth? Isn't that great? He never grows faint or weary, ever. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. Now, I don't know about you, but you might want to even circle verse 29 as we read it. I, I did in my own notes. <clears throat> I was looking at it, I thought, I'm going to circle this because it's so important. He gives power to those who are tired and worn out. Now, some he gives power to those who are tired and worn out. He offers strength to the weak. Even youths will become exhausted and young men will give up. But those who wait on the Lord will do what? Find what? New strength, new power, new endurance. As we seek the Lord, they will fly high on wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isn't that good news? I'm going to read verse 29 again. I really like it. You might want to double underline it. He gives power to those who are tired 
and worn out. What that leads me to believe is that we will at times get tired and things in life will wear us out. All right? It's going to happen. I may not want it to happen, but it's going to happen. But what does he do? He gives strength and power yeah, to the weak. I mean, if you're worn out, you can count on God to give you power today. Power. So number one, some of us live at such a fast pace, it's hard to slow down. I'm learning uh, as I get a little older, the slow down. Um, maybe I have no choice, <laughs> but, but slow down, you know, because life is such a fast paced thing. That's why I don't watch news. I will not watch news. I, I just, <clears throat> I don't know how long it's been. Somebody said, did you see this? And I said, no. Well, did you hear about that? No. There's a war in Israel. Okay. Tell me about it because I haven't heard about it. Now, that's how far out I am from the pace that the world's at right now. All right? So we just have to slow down. And one thing happens when we start to slow down, we can always trust in God's power. But I'm going to say this, um, and I told, I don't know how many people I've told this to. Um, I remind myself every day, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Why? Because I'm going to get tired anyway. It doesn't matter. I don't get it. But once you're past a certain age, you take more naps than you need. You sit in your chair and all of a sudden, boom, you're gone. I, am I that tired? I guess so. But I can count on God to give me power and endurance to make each and every day count for him. Are you with me? Every day. So sometimes we need um, God's power because our lives just get filled with stuff. They just get filled with things. And um, so we need God's power. For me personally, and you're probably the same way, I'll maybe get five phone calls, one right after another, one right after another. Somebody's going to surgery, somebody's dealing with cancer, somebody's dealing with this problem, somebody's dealing with that problem. And you know what? If you're hearing the same thing, if you're not careful, it can do what? Wear you down. If you're not careful, you hear enough of what people in life are going through, it can wear you down. You think, wait, I'm not supposed to be tired, but yet there's a weight that can come on us when we are praying for other people. And so God says, just release it to me. Release it to me. Give it to me. All right? They give it to you, give it back to me. I want you to be strong, powerful, and be an overcomer in the midst of all these different things you're hearing. So Roman numeral number two, <laughs> this is another part of it. I can count on God's power when I'm in pain. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> what a topic, I'll tell you. <sighs> anyway. Number one, I'm going to go through this whole thing anyway. We can count on God's power when we're in pain, all right? Thanks for most of us, the first pain we feel and we deal with is pain in our bodies. You may not like it, pain in our bodies. And uh, I thought about this. I uh, talk to people, you do too. How many people have you talked to that have back pain? Right? pain in their back. I mean, you know, you bend over and all of a sudden, whew, what, where'd that come from? We still are dealing with, aren't we? How many are, well, I'll ask you, how many are dealing with shoulder pain? Yeah, well, at least you can rift it. <laughs> right? It's no fun. None. Back pain. Shoulder pain, blood pressure, high, low. Still dealing with it, aren't you? Now, just think about this minute. I mean, I thought, whoa. The list goes on and on and on and on what people are dealing with, right? But the first thing we're thinking about, wow, God deals with our pain. 
Believe it or not, he cares about our back pain, our shoulder pain, all these other pains that you and I deal with in life. He wants to take care of us. But the first thing that we all deal with, as I listed all these different things, is pain in our body. Because why we feel it immediately, don't we? Um, I'm not going to go on with the list. I could go on and on and on. But I'm going I'm to move to something else. <laughs> My wife says, good, okay. Number two, there are emotional pains that we also deal with. Emotional things. Um, I just listed three. You probably have more than I can even count on. But number one is friendships are fractured. Sometimes our friendships just get fractured. We don't mean to have them happen that way, but sometimes friendships that used to be friends are no longer friends. Things just separate, they divide. All that happens in life. Financial pressures, number two, or B. Uh, I'm happy that none of you have that problem. I'm, I'm happy that you're all wealthy, very rich, also very famous, all of that here. But some people still deal with financial pressure. They still deal with it, paying bills. Um, sometimes people are simply still looking for jobs, right? Do you know anybody, friend or family that's looking for a job? Yeah, one, two, three, anybody else? Yeah, I do. You know, you think that have a job because there's so much out there to, to do, and yet people are still struggling to find work. Find decent work, find a decent job. And if you don't have a job, guess what? No money's coming in. No money comes in, then you have to deal with financial pressure. Even if you don't want to, it's still there. It's still there, it's things that we have to deal with in life. And the third is families that are in pain. So many families are going through so many struggles. And so these are some of the things that we deal with in life. And God says, you know what? He's there to take care of all of that. Everything I've talked about so far, God is there to take care of all of it. Psalms 41.3, the Lord nurses them when they are sick. And notice this, and eases what? Their pain and discomfort. Isn't that great? In the midst of any kind of pain, and again, you could probably list more things than I can think of, but in the midst of all of that, the Word of God declares to you and I, the Word of God declares it. So it's true, it's real, it's effective, and it works in each and every one of our lives. Every single day, the Word of God does. And so I look at this and I say, the Lord nurses them that are sick. And He eases their pain and also discomfort. Isn't that great news? I mean, that's really good news. And so I look at that and I think, wow. God's love abounds and then he gives us all this power. All this power to get through each and every day of our life. You wake up and you think, wow, this is going to be an interesting day. Gives us power to get through it, to endure. Roman numeral number three. I can count on God's power when I'm tempted. When I am tempted. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, every test that, that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. But God keeps his promise. He will not allow you to be tested or tempted beyond your power to remain firm. Isn't that good? You're not going to do anything that's going to take you further than you can go. He will not allow anything to take you further than you can handle. He's there with you at all times. He will not allow you, and I'm going to repeat it again. He will not allow you to go beyond, uh, be tested beyond your power to remain firm. Your power to remain firm. At the time you are put to the test, he will give you the strength to endure it. He will give you the strength to endure it. And so provide you with a what? Way out. I don't know about you all, but I need God's power all the time. All the time. <sighs> when I'm tempted. There, i got to read this. There's a bumper sticker on a, on a car that went by. It says, and lead us not into temptation. I'm perfectly capable of finding it myself. <laughs> you don't have to lead me into temptation. So, uh, 
Incidentally, temptations come in all forms. I know when people talk about they're tempted in certain ways, I think about it, and I think about cookies. I think about ice cream. I think about candy. Pumpkin pie, only one piece. I mean, what's that? Self-control. There you go. <laughs> but temptations come in all kinds of forms. When you think about being tempted, all the first thing people, I, I think, think about is sex or, or, you know, adultery or some kind of sexual kind of thing is that that's a temptation. I'm going to tell you something. To stop eating certain things, that's a real test and a temptation. Can, can you stop? eating or having this one thing for seven days. Okay? It could be candy. I, I'm, 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 I know I'm being kind of silly here, but just think about it for a minute because some people cannot put certain things down. I don't care what it is. And my question, and I've told other people this, um, again, I don't care if it's Snickers, I don't care what it is. But can you stop it for seven days? Can you resist that temptation? It's not going to put you in hell. It's not going to ruin your life. But it is an interesting test. So just think about it for just a minute. Because we have all these temptations. I think about candy, ice cream, cookies, etc., etc. And, uh, you know, I'm an ice cream guy. I, I like certain things. But I think it's important, can I stop eating ice cream for seven days? Well, Bill, that's pretty dumb. No, it isn't. No. Can you give up one thing that tempts you for a given period of time? Okay, I don't think you have to go to counseling. You don't have to get on the phone and talk to somebody. Just stop it. Because we're all tempted, but God says, I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you power to overcome that one thing. All you have to do is what? Trust in me. Trust in the Lord God Almighty. Not in your own strength. Not in your own power. Lord, I'm turning this over to you. I need your power in my life right now to stop this, like Bill said, maybe seven days. Maybe longer, because I'm going to be tempted at all kinds of different levels. So I've got to have God's power in my life all the time. And I'll tell you, there's no age limit. Did you hear me? There's no age limit. I don't care how old you are. Even in my own mind, I have to reject things at my age. And you'd think, wait a minute, you're too old to even think about stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it still pops in. It still has to be what? Rebuked. Why? Because it's still a temptation to draw me away from God and to steer me toward that temptation. Is that making sense to anybody? <clears throat> it's there. So I'm going to give you a couple easy steps and a solution to the whole thing. Real simple. <clears throat> Number one. Walk in God's power daily. Choose to walk in God's power daily, each and every day. And by that, I mean, I prefer to have a morning prayer time, a designated time that I shut my door at my office, <clears throat> quiet. It's my prayer time, intercessory time, praying for miracle time. Just sit there and, Lord, let's just have a chat. And I'm going to bring all these things out to you. I'm, I want that prayer time. And I want to tell you something else. Have Thanksgiving time. But don't just do it once or twice. I think you ought to thank God daily, all the time. So if I'm going to walk in God's power, I want to have a prayer time, a Thanksgiving time, and I need to put on my spiritual armor each and every day. Every day. I thought about, wait a minute, I put it on yesterday. Yep. And you went to bed. Today's what? A new day. Today's a brand new day. Put on your spiritual armor. Each and every solid day. Have prayer time. Have Thanksgiving time. 
Have a quiet time. You have to have all of that, and that'll draw you close to God. If you give time to God, he'll give you what? Time back. Right? But I got to walk in God's power daily, and to do that, I got to be in his presence. And it asks, Matthew 7, 7, ask, and you'll receive. Well, what, think about that. Ask, and you will receive. That means I have to take the time to ask, right? I got to take the time. And I don't care where you are or what the environment is, ask God. And as soon as you ask him, now you're making what? Contact. I'm, taking, I'm making contact with the power. Just by simply asking, oh, Lord, I need this. I need to take care of that. I need help here. I need to overcome this. You know that I need your power in my life right now. I want to walk in victory and not defeat. I want to walk as an overcomer. Isn't that good? I mean, that's what we need to do. And all you have to do is ask. Acts 1.8, and you will receive what power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Well, I've already been there two, three times. And I think, well, wait a minute. What does that really mean? I mean, I can't go, I guess I could go to Jerusalem again for the fifth time, hang around, walk around Jerusalem. Um, I don't want to go to Gaza, but I could walk around there too. Sure, why not? In the midst of it, battles, God will still protect those he loves, period. But I think about this. What do I need power? Where, where, where do I need to be a witness? I'm not going to get on the flight again for 13 hours on a plane. So what's it talking about? Where are you supposed to be a witness? Correct. Wherever these little feet take me, the gospel of peace is right there, right? That's why I have to shod my feet with the gospel of peace each and every day. Because I'm going someplace different each and every day. I want to be a witness everywhere I go for the glory of God. Period. It doesn't matter. Make sense? So God says, hey, you're going to walk in his power. You're going to be a witness. B, be connected to the source of power. We need the person of the Holy Spirit simply put in our life. If you haven't asked for the Holy Spirit, I say ask for the Holy Spirit. Ask him to come into your life and empower you. All right? And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You can be saved, baptized, and then the Holy Spirit's going to save you, all that. But then again, I really believe we ask, oh, Holy Spirit, come. Come. I need your power. I need your power. I need it each and every day. I want that power in my life. And we need to be connected, don't we? I have this, uh, I'm a very intelligent guy, and I have this uh, theory in life. Things work better when they're plugged in. I have a beautiful toaster. In fact, we have beautiful toasters in the kitchen. They were born and raised in our kitchen. These beautiful, lovely toasters. Some are two and some are four things you can dip down. But guess what? They don't work unless they're what? Plugged in. You and I have to be plugged into the Holy Spirit each and every day. We do not want to get disconnected. Stay plugged in. Stay plugged in. And number three, choose God's way with faith that God's power will, in fact, show up by faith. Faith and God's power are connected. I have to have faith that God will, he'll give me power. He'll give me strength. He'll give me endurance. All right. It's that it's basically that simple. So you step out in faith, you receive it each and every day. We need God's power operating. So I don't know if I put a remember. Is there a remember thing in your notes? 
What's that, Dean? Study guide? Yeah. Study, okay. Well, I just thought about this anyway. I, I need God's power in my life when I'm tired. Don't know about you. I need God's power in my life when I'm being tempted or tested each and every day. And so God says, if you got some pain, turn it over to me. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. I'll perform a miracle in your life today. So my encouragement to you, stay connected. Stay connected. Stay plugged in to God's power each and every day. Amen? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your power in each one of our lives. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross to save us, to set us free, and to empower us. Father, thank you for your overwhelming love for each one of us. And Father, may our love for you grow and grow and grow in spirit, in our soul, body, mind. Father, we just want to love you more and more. So I thank you for your word. I pray that not one word fell to the ground. Every scripture will penetrate the very spirit and soul of everyone listening. For, Father, your praise and your glory as we lift up Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, thank you for being our counselor, our comforter, and our guide. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.